لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك لبيك والنعمة Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. This is Asiu Ansar Ko. I am Rashida Abwakar, your regular anchor, welcoming you to another edition of the program. The National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, has concluded the screening of airliners for the 2024 heart exercise. The screening exercise, which took place at the Heart House, started on Tuesday the 12th and ended on Monday the 18th of December 2023. Details of how the exercise was conducted and the airlines involved will form the trust of our Spotlight segment. Still on the program, we have other regular segments such as Making the Heart and Narcon News Diary, which highlight the activities of Narcon and other stakeholders in the heart industry. And on the quiz, a winner has emerged. We shall bring you the details in the course of the program. Keep watching. <laughs> Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. The program kicks off with the news diary. Stay with us. Preparatory to the 2024 Hajj, the chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Narcon, Malan Jalal Ahmed Arabi has met with Saudi ambassador to Nigeria, Faisal Ibrahim al Gamahdi in Abuja. During a courtesy visit on Wednesday, Malan Jalal expressed gratitude to the Saudi ambassador for supporting Narcon using the diplomatic umbrella of the Saudi embassy. He further highlighted the long-standing cordial relationship between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia, particularly in the area of facilitating Hajj and Umrah. Ambassador Ibrahim Gamidi assured Narcon and Nigeria of continued support by Saudi Arabia in order to streamline working relationships for pilgrims and other stakeholders. In the meantime, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Narcon, is set to complete investigation into complaints and petitions on alleged irregularities in Hajj slots allocation to tour operators. A statement to this effect by the Commission's Head of Public Affairs, Hajia Fatima Sara, says the decision for the inquiry is to ensure fairness, adding that once the process is finalized, Narcon will provide updates to the public. Narcon is expected to distribute 20,000 Hajj slots to tour operators that have been licensed to participate in the forthcoming Hajj. As the deadline for the payment of initial deposit of 4.5 million naira expires at the end of this month, Hajj officials across states have intensified their calls to intending pilgrims to pay up before the expiration of the deadline. In Kaduna State, the newly appointed executive chairman of the State Pilgrims Welfare Agency Mylan Salihu Abubakar reiterated the commitment of the agency to continue its mobilization of intending pilgrims to meet up with the payment deadline. Mylan Abubakar gave the assurance while addressing journalists at the agency headquarters in Kaduna, saying that the various enlightenment campaigns mounted with the support of clerics and other stakeholders has been making positive impact. He, however, stressed the need for more enlightenment, warning on the implication of missing the deadline. We are urging all our imams in all the mosques uh, in the st across the state and all our traditional uh, leaders and all our media people to spread this uh, message and call and encourage intended pilgrims to come forth and make those payments before the end of the deadline. 
uh, we are assuring you that this new uh, uh, committee and the members of the committee who have been given uh, the responsibility to discharge the responsibility of uh, this agency uh, will do uh, will do our best to make all necessary improvements in order to make things easy for the intended pilgrims. And in Kebi State, the chairman of the State Pilgrims Welfare Agency, Alhaji Faruk Musayaru, has enlisted the support of traditional rulers across the state to support them in alerting pilgrims on the payment of the 4.5 million naira initial deposit on or before 31st December. While at the palaces of the Emir of Gondu, His Royal Highness Muhammad Ilyas Bashar, that of Zuru, His Royal Highness Retired General Muhammad Sani Sami, Arugungu and Yawuri, the agency's chairman solicited their support and cooperation towards 2024 Hajj preparations, particularly on early payment of Hajj deposits. In Oyo, officials of the Pilgrims Welfare Board and other stakeholders took the campaign to Jumat mosques across the state. Flyers containing messages on the payment instructions were distributed after prayers. Similar efforts have been ongoing in all the states. Saudi government has fixed the 29th of April 2024 as the deadline for the issuance of visas to intending pilgrims. Alhamdulillah, you are still watching as you answer the call. A public enlightenment presentation that keeps you abreast of the activities of the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and other heart related matters. As part of preparations for the 2024 Hatch, the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, has screened two categories of airliners. The categories of the airliners screened are for the airlift operations of programs from states and those who register with tour operators, as well as the airliners that will fright programs excess luggage. The spotlight segment coming up next will focus on the details of what transpired at the screening exercise. Stay with us. Whether we have the aircraft or we don't have the aircraft. Representatives of different airliners who want to fly Nigerian pilgrims during the 2024 Hajj took turns to appear before the Aviation Screening and Monitoring Committee set up by the National Hatch Commission of Nigeria, NACAN. The committee, which was inaugurated on Tuesday, the 12th of December 2023, by NACAN Acting Chairman Malam Jalal Ahmed Arabi, has members drawn from government aviation related agencies and other key stakeholders. They are Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, Nigerian Space Management Agency, NEMA, an Accident Investigation Bureau, AIB, Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria, FAN, and representatives of states and the FCT, among others. Armed with its mandate, the committee, which is chaired by NACAN Secretary Dr. Rabi Abdullah Kontagora, subjected officials of the airlines to thorough screening. Nine air carriers applied for the airlift of pilgrims. They are Air Contractors, AirPs, Asman Air, Flyners, Max Air. Others include Nakon Avians, Sahar Continental Limited, Sky Power Express, and Value Jet. For the cargo carriers, or those that will freight pilgrims' excess luggage, the following airlines were screened Cargo Zeal Technologies, Nakon Avians, and Kuala Investment Limited. Out of these airliners, only Flyners is a foreign company, while the others are indigenous. Okay, noted. And being filled by TACO does not have complete information. So first, we have to ascertain who is in the operation. NACON Secretary Dr. Rabi Abdullah Kontagora chairs the 32-member Screening and Aviation Monitoring Committee. He explains more about the involvement of aviation experts. They are the, they are the experts on aviation. So they are the technical aspect of aviation. And they are the ones that who now normally go into the records or books, not into the submissions. All the submissions by the air carriers, the other ones to go sit down, look at them to see whether these papers 
uh, order whatever was submitted by the air carriers are in order. Now, after that, the committee will come and sit down together and then assess these submissions and then award marks and to, so that they will be able to grade them well and then see those who succeed in the Guided by the term of reference, the committee studied all documents submitted by the airliners to determine their eligibility. The terms of uh, reference of the committee was about just to screen these air carriers and look at their uh, ability, their strength, look at their ability in terms of finance, look at their ability in terms of the technical knowledge or know-how, look at their ability in terms of staffing, look at their ability in terms of uh, their, their ability to actually uh, get these air carriers, their, their potentials in getting these air carriers, if it is partners, whether it is ownership. Do they really own these aircrafts or is it partnership they are going to, they, they will be going into? Is it partnership they will be going into? Now, you have to look at all uh, this one and then you have the power the committee has the power to look at it to see those who should be uh, screened, who does, uh, those who actually meet the standard. Dr. Contagora said when the committee is done with its assignment, a report will be submitted to the appropriate authorities for consideration. The screening is not completely, it's not completely, it's not over because what the, the committee has succeeded in sitting with the air carriers, but you know normally with screening or any exercise you do. After you finish it, you collect your report, you package your report, you submit it to the relevant authority, and then the relevant authority will uh, take it upward. That is the pro process we are now. So we are finished sitting, but we are collecting our uh, report. That is it. And when the report is done, that's when it will go public. When approvals are granted to the successful airliners, the next stage of the screening is to inspect the aircraft to be deployed during airlift operations. So when the air carriers are ready for their aircraft to be inspected, this, uh, the NCA will, will send whoever it deems uh, fit to do that work. And he will certainly do this work and submit a report. Yes, and there is no way, issue of safety, you cannot escape. You cannot escape. If you don't have a good team, there is no way you can be given work, for instance. Yes, you have to convince everybody beyond reasonable doubt that if you are given this work, the safety of the pilgrims is guaranteed. Still at the screening exercise, the committee took note of the peculiarities associated with every hatch operation. Even though we know all operations have peculiarity, the 2022 hatch operation has a peculiarity. That of 2023 has peculiarity. And certainly, this too, 2024 will have peculiarity. But... The issue of air carriers, air uh, carriers, uh, the airlift is one issue that you cannot compromise because you are talking about safety, you are talking about life. Uh -huh. So that is one thing. The resolve, there is a resolve to improve, to improve on whatever, uh, because the issue about improvement, that's what the chairman keeps saying, the chairman. Allah Ahmad Jalal Arabi keeps saying uh, there is always room for improvement. Yes, I can't reinvent the wheel, like he says. Mm -hmm. I can't reinvent the wheel, but there is always room for improvement. And that is what we are, we are all uh, uh, said to do, the mindset, the mindset we are predisposed to do, to bring this improvement in the, 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 the Hajj operation. In line with Nakhon's practice, the Aviation Screening and Monitoring Committee walks throughout the Hajj period. The tradition is the Aviation Monitoring Committee continues to be relevant in the Hajj operation because uh, aviation or airlift is the key operational aspect or factor in and the success of any, in, 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 in any Hajj operation. You can finish all your arrangements, but if you do not have a successful airlift, it will tell on, in fact, it may not even be possible for you to, to, to if you do not elect the pilgrims, or you leave some behind, it's a problem. And then, what about the situation of the airports? Fine, will be there to be doing that for you. What about other connections? What about the weather? What about the, the institution that is uh, uh, empowered to look at, to investigate accidents? What about institution that is empowered to look 
the space nama so you they continue that's why they are called aviation monitoring committee it's not about screening of the intended pilgrims i'm not a screener of the carriers no it's not it's about the, the operation the whole of the committee is also expected to make recommendations at any point during the 2024 hajj necessary for the efficient conduct of the airlift operations <laughs> Masha Allah, the program is Asu Ansar Kof. Up next is making the hatch. Tonight, Imam Tahir Baba Ibrahim takes us through discussion on how pilgrims should prepare for hatch. Let's hear him. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, 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 Allahumma labbaik. When planning to undertake the Hajj journey, intending pilgrims are expected to prepare themselves in different ways. How then should intending pilgrims prepare for the Hajj? One must be healthy. He must be sound. On making the Hajj tonight, Imam Tahir Bala Ibrahim answers this and other questions. He begins by explaining the concept of Hajj in Islam. As Muslims, we all know that Hajj is the fifth of the five pillars of Islam. And uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, he clearly stated and mentioned that Islam is built upon five pillars. And among these five pillars, Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam. And uh, it's a journey obligatory upon every Muslim man and woman once in a lifetime. Imam Tahir Ibrahim clarifies further. But it's obligatory could not be practiced unless some other conditions are fulfilled. That is why he said that for those who have the ability to perform the Hajj. Uh, ability in this regard, it has been explained to cover many aspects of this spiritual journey. First of all, one must be healthy. He must be sound for performance of Hajj rites required fitness. It is on this basis, among others, that intending pilgrims are encouraged to prepare themselves adequately. To begin with, the intention to perform the Hajj must be for Allah's sake. There are two conditions that are very essential as explained by ulama of Aqidah. These are prerequisite for any action, any act of ibadah to be accepted in the sight of Allah. These two things are al-ikhlas. Then the second is Mutaba at Sunnah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That one must purify his intention. His intention must be for Allah's sake, not for any other thing. So one can achieve that tazawadu or khairazad, ena khairazad taqwa. One can achieve that by preparing himself and uh, trying to make himself for Allah, that his intention is for Allah, he is performing the Hajj for Allah. Having made their intentions, the Islamic scholar says intending pilgrims must prepare themselves spiritually. One must know the way and manner by which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
perform his pilgrimage, perform his Hajj. Because he said, Khudu anni manasikakum. Learn from me, take from me how to perform your Hajj. So, Alhamdulillah, Prophet Sallallahu performed Hajj once. And how he performed this Hajj was perfectly. Imam Tahir Baba Ibrahim advised intending pilgrims to take advantage of every opportunity to learn more about Hajj and Umrah, particularly the weekly enlightenment programs organized across the states. Alhamdulillah, that's not the end of it. We shall continue the discussion in subsequent edition of the program. Now it's time to know the winner of last week's quiz and the question for this week. Good luck. Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, mention three lessons embedded in performing Umrah. The correct answer is, humility, unity of the Ummah, and three, patience. The winner is Abu Bakr Sadiq from Zamfara State. He provided the answer ahead of others. Abu Bakr Sadiq will be contacted on how Nakon will reach him with the prize he won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakon's effort in social investment in Nigeria. Now to the quiz for this week. And the question is, name two major ways to prepare for Hajj. Again, name two major ways to prepare for Hajj. Text your answer to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry the name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Once again, good luck to you. Up next are your messages. Suleiman Suleiman from Kaduna State sent in the first message. It reads, I appreciate NACOM for all its pilgrims enlightenment efforts. I also thank the commission for the 25,000 Naira cash prize. I have received mine. Sagir Ibrahim sent in a similar message. It says, Assalamu alaikum. I wish to express my gratitude to Nakon and other stakeholders for its social intervention. May Allah reward you all with the best of his rewards. This is where we draw the curtain on today's program. See you same time, same day next week with another edition of the program. But before we go, remember that you can send your messages, comments, observations, and questions through our mobile phone number and other social media platforms. Once again, thanks for watching. Ma'asala.